అంటే ఇది మాకు ముందు నుండి మా తాతలు తాతల నుండి ఇదే వర్క్ చేస్తున్నారు కాబట్టి మాకు ఈ పని తప్ప వేరే వర్క్ రాదు దీని మీదే దీన్ని వదులుకుంటే మళ్ళీ మాకు గుర్తింపు ఉండదు అని మేమే దీన్ని ఎలాగైనా కంటిన్యూ చేయాలని ఇప్పటికీ కొన్ని పప్పెట్ షోలు చేసుకుంటా planets and our civilizations are changing faster than ever before. Join me as I travel the globe talking to startup founders using technologies to make our world more interesting, accessible and livable. These are the entrepreneurs that are creating the future we will live in. This is Now Go Build. India is a place that is impossible to describe in words. It truly has to be experienced. It has one of the longest uninterrupted written histories of religion, art, culture and politics. It is hard for many of us to conceive of generational traditions that have lasted well over 2000 years. It is almost more difficult to conceive of those traditions disappearing in only one generation. India's past is rich, but its bright new future runs the risk of erasing a way of life for many artisans that work in age-old forms. India's growth to the most populous democracy on this planet is astounding. Due to our modern technological revolution and a singular global economy, we are witnessing one of the world's oldest societies morph in the historical blink of an eye, and Bangalore is largely at the center of that evolution. The Silicon Valley of India, it is home to many of the country's largest technology companies and a booming startup community. The gravitational pull of good pay, modern living and joining the growing middle class has had a profound impact on many Indian traditions, as well as the smaller communities where those traditions were born. Sujay Suresh, Alino Navatya, founders of Swende, have dedicated themselves to using their business and technology argument to ensure that traditional artisanship remains a sustainable way to live in India. This village is called the Nimal Kunta village, okay. uh, which is in the state of Andhra Pradesh, one of the four southern Indian states. There are about 70 families that currently practice this art form. Uh, so we'll introduce you to our first artist, okay, um, who is Venkatesh. Oh, yeah, so he's here. Yeah, this is his home. Yeah. Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for having us here. So we'll just walk around and have a look okay. and we'll explain the art form to you. In fact, each state, like if you talk about 25 states, uh -huh. across these 25 states, there are 10,000 plus unique art forms. And the thing is, 80% of these are dying art forms. If they continue to practice these art forms the way they've been done centuries earlier or for yeah. centuries, it's no longer palatable for the modern day consumer. Therefore, it's very, very important to A, take it to people, so make it more accessible, and B, give it a form that more and more people in the current age like. So Zwende is solving for the creative supply chain in India. What we realized is that these art forms and artisans have infinite creativity, but limited resources. So we work with artisans, we digitize their inventory of products and designs. And within this portfolio, people can mix and match and create their own combinations of designs. That combination is sent back to the artisans and they would physically handcraft it and make it and then that would be delivered to the customer. So tell me a bit more about the onboarding because that seems like quite a... It's not a self-service process, yes. it's a heavyweight process. Yeah, when we onboard a designer, we are try to understand what's the story, what's the inspiration behind what they do. So we create a page, uh, you know, for them where we talk about their background, their uh, storyline, all of that. And uh, we also do the photography and the modularization and digitization. I would say our dream would be to enable artisans in the remotest of villages in India to create things for people that truly matches their style and taste. So this is parchment leather 
and uh, the art form is called tolu bomalata or leather puppetry okay. so what they used to do in about 200 bc is that uh, they would paint life size puppets uh, which would depict different characters from hindu mythology and as you can see these have been colored with really bright colors so uh, that that's the traditional art form uh, and because the leather is translucent uh, and puppet shows are a dying art form they extend themselves well to lamp shades so if you see what she is painting right now it's using the same art form on parchment leather but what she's painting is a lampshade okay. uh, but they still use very traditional motifs very traditional colors and traditional designs so we'll just take you to another place that shows you some finished lampshades okay. so you get an idea of how it sort of looks yeah yeah okay so you see these are uh, all hand painted yeah oh that's the same one that she's yeah. making yeah yeah, yeah. So it's wet. So when are you? It's very intricate. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. So, how many people actually are in the village that are living off this art form? Uh, so there are about seventy families that actually practice this art form right now. Yeah. Uh, used to be a lot more before, and so you can see outside every home there are people who sit and work through the day, uh, and these families migrated into this village and became a smaller community. So there weren't originally there weren't 70 families here originally. No, so about 1500 years back they migrated from Maharashtra okay. to Andhra Pradesh. We are currently in the state of Andhra Pradesh yeah. and uh, that's how uh, they came here and they started practicing the art form over here. Yeah, it's a drawing of a bamboo stick, is it? Ha. So that that's the starting point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the black and white. Uh, yeah. So you can see that bamboo yeah. stick. So they make a small slit, they make it sharp like a pen. and then okay. they dip in natural dye and they do the painting okay so here you see a different form and size of the lampshade so there's a lot of creativity that these guys have and it's just a question of how do we bring it to market so that uh, it's more consumable so so what information given that they're not tech savvy is it that you give them so that they can start to optimize their business so from day 0 we had a feedback loop that we built for our designers we helped them predict not only what ready inventory they should hold but also what raw inventory they should get similarly we try and tell them what works in different parts of the country so we tell them hey you know what the market is looking for these products these are doing well your art form can be easily extended to these so we think you should launch and every time uh, we have used this kind of data analytics to launch a product we've seen it yeah. become a best seller it's yeah. i think it's very important to look at data uh, you know look at not just what you want to offer but what customers want listen to them and if you can figure out a scalable and a structured way to pass that feedback back to your designers i think you only create more and more of what customers want i wanted to see swendy's workshop space here they demonstrate how to adopt the traditional art forms to create more lifestyle products and broaden the market for this work and how they use data to predict what will sell we show you how modularization of design works so these are different designs that are available on the website okay right and the same design goes on let's say this kind of a product okay. uh, it could go on this kind of a product or it could go on this kind of a product that really to minimize the amount of inventory that you need to hold yes. in exchange for expediency of shipping and and increase yeah and so it's a uh, careful balance What are these things on top here? Uh, so these are the frames that are used to make the lamp shades okay. with the same uh, artwork, which is this. Okay. So this is the tolu bomalata. So this is what is hand painted on leather, which goes on bags or it goes on frames. Okay. So again, that's um, the sort of modularization that we have done because it's the same size of artwork and design that gets wrapped on a lamp or becomes flat, goes on a bag, and so again, the risk of holding that artwork as raw inventory. is diversified across a lampshade and a variety of okay. bags and again given the modular nature we are now uh, getting different artists to give different forms of art that can be used in this bag okay. so with modularization again we can increase the depth of the skews with many different art forms so you mentioned earlier when we were walking around Uh, about that sort of younger generations expect something different yeah. from unique products yeah. yeah absolutely so if you see just around us this is uh, this art form in its most traditional 
heritage form, uh, which is, you know, life-size puppets or wall art. And not too many people in the younger generation would appreciate something always which is so traditional and so uh, colourful. So Zwende works with boutique designers. These are typically design school students who in turn work with artisans to train them to contemporize their art and make it more palatable for the current day consumer. And that makes that you way more beyond just a, a marketplace. Absolutely. You actually create new forms of the art Absolutely. before that. Okay, so artisans more are from villages like, like yes, this, yes. where the designers are more urban? Urban women, yes. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that is uh, that gets us to work every single day and that excites us the most is, uh, you know, being able to empower women uh, with us following a made to order model. Uh, we've been able to empower a lot of these women entrepreneurs and sort of bring them into this online ecosystem uh, and enable them to have consistent income. So before Zwende, their point of sale was two flea markets a year. Okay. But now they have sustainable, consistent monthly incomes thanks to revenues and business that's coming from Zwende. While India's fast-growing economy has been a boon for many, only 14% of the entrepreneurs in India are women. Zwende has set their sights on raising that number. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you show me a bit? Yeah, so this is a nameplate, uh, mm -hmm. which I'm doing for Zwende. Mm -hmm. So I'll choose the colors, I'll make some variety of designs. Then I'll put these designs on the paper. So you put them on the Zwende website? Yes. Or yeah. they do it for they you? They do it for they me. Do it for uh, you. I just ah. have to do this and this, that's it. Okay. So they, they take it up after that. Okay. And, and how do the, the things that you make, how do they get to your customers? Does Wendy take care of that? Or? Absolutely, yes. Okay. So every day there's a shipping guy, he'll come at four and he'll pick up the orders for the day. Mm -hmm. And I just, my thing is just to keep it ready before the uh, deadlines. So how digital savvy do you need to be to interact with Swendy? I get a message okay. and then the, all the details are there on the screen. Okay. So I just have a look and I start with it. Okay. So I just have to focus on my work. Is this enough to make a business out of? It is getting better yeah. uh, every year for me. Okay, good. Like uh, the orders are quite regular and uh, it's kind of given me financial stability too. So it must be, I mean, suddenly you have a platform that can reach first of all, all of India mm -hmm. and, and maybe even beyond India. Mm -hmm. So how, how does that make you feel as an artist? I think it's very nice when people start appreciating something which comes from my own country yeah. and something which I have done, it's a great feeling. If you have, let's say, about 60 to 70 different attributes at a merchandise level for your SKUs, and then you have so many different attributes for your customers, and then they're taking so many different journeys on the website, the real question is, how do you place the right product in front of the right customer at the right time? Today, a large part of it is uh, based on collaborative filtering, uh, you know. It works. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It works, it kind of. Yeah. yeah, people who like this also like yeah, this, yeah, yeah. and Thank then you. you do a lookalike on that. Yeah. So that's, that's one. Uh, the second is that because we track user journeys and not just events at an mm -hmm. aggregate level on the website, yeah. uh, we know that when a user is taking a particular journey, uh, you know, this user is more likely to convert at this product. Mm -hmm. And that uh, when a new user comes on the website and we don't know any historical information about them, uh, we'd use the journeys and some collaborative filtering to eventually recommend, you know, what they would want. I think at Zwende, we can confidently say that uh, over 80% of our customers today, we have actually had a conversation with okay. to understand not only why they bought, but why they didn't buy or what would make them buy. Which is crucial if you want your recommendations to work. Absolutely, yeah. One of the taglines we started Zwende with was that our AI is 2,500 year old, <laughs> right? So we basically bake in uh, the nuances and the rules of the art form and let's assume, uh, you know, for simplicity's sake that you have a lampshade and the lampshade has two parts, two sides. You know, if a user selected a black and white on one side, 
and the artisan or the designer says that hey you know what with black and white i'm only going to allow people to use black and white because if you mix it with other colors that does not preserve the ethos of the art form okay so as you navigate and as you try to design uh, the million choices eventually get narrowed down into a fewer number of choices yeah. uh, for the user to also have confidence that hey what i've created looks good and actually there's another reason i think especially in your particular case with so many different um, product attributes there's something called the, the paradox of choice yeah yes. yeah that if you only have three choices yeah. it's easy to choose yeah are you happy with your choice yeah, yeah. if you have 500 choices yes you may still choose the same thing yes but you may have this lingering thing in your head going like maybe maybe yes. maybe it's not the right one yeah. so people are less happy yes. with the same choice yeah. and so uh, collaborative filtering already helps you with just servicing limiting the choice and making people more happy with their yeah. choice so tell me a bit about sort of how, how is your team built up is this all technologists or i mean what are these art artisans themselves or tell me a bit about your team Okay, uh, so in fact, uh, the technology is something that we don't have in-house yet. Uh, and it's thanks to cloud services, it's thanks to outsourced technology partners that we have been able to find to build the technology. So in essence, you're the prototypical built on the cloud startup. Yeah. In that sense, you, the only people you have in-house are not focused on technology at all. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And so that's, you're purely basically spending all your money on, on the things that matter in building a better product. Absolutely, and 100%, it's only been possible because we have these partners and ready solutions that we can build this on top of. <laughs> One thing that really struck me was that when we started building AWS, we really started building a platform so that others could focus on the kind of things that they really wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, you guys don't want to be in IT. Yeah. Yeah? You want to be a platform for artists. And what I want to see with you is that you actually do exactly the same thing as at AWS do. You provide a complete managed service environment for artists so that they don't have to think about customer acquisition, they don't have to think about shipping, they don't have to think about supply chain. And so, in essence, I see you guys as a nice layer, similar to AWS, as a, an artist cloud service, wow. yeah? And I think you've hit the nail on the head uh, with our passion turning into business. It's amazing that you, you called it an artist cloud service, <laughs> and I think that's something that we are going to latch on to. <laughs> so I actually have a question for you, Werner. You've seen uh, what we've done. Yeah. Uh, you've built Amazon for so many years. You know, what would you advise us in terms of things that we should avoid doing? I think uh, if I look back at all the mistakes, and whether it was me or whether we as Amazon did, it's always mistakes of omission. Things that you think you should have done, but you put it off. Yeah, and as such, I think, you know, whenever something comes to you and your gut feeling says we should be going after this, right. do it. Just make it an experiment. Yeah, see what happens. Yeah, try to keep it as lean and as mean as possible. And pretty quickly, you'll know whether there's a, a, there, whether there is something there. So whenever your gut says, this might be good, but your, my, your head says, maybe next year, do it now. It is no surprise that I believe in the power of technology to change things for the better. Our ability to innovate and create and connect has resulted in the most amazing advances in human history. And there is no end in sight. But with every advance, every gain in efficiency or connectivity, there is always the risk of leaving something behind. And some of these things are precious. Here in Nima La Kunta is just one example of technology making it possible to save an art form that may have been lost. An art form that supports the precious thing. A town, a community, a family. <laughs>